Good morning. Uh, I'm MCA Chair and CEO Jan Lieber. Just wanted to give an update on the situation at 96th Street. Um, we've made substantial progress overnight. First of all, we're thankful that the injuries so far to our passengers have been minor. There are 20, roughly 25 people reported to have minor injuries, but we're grateful that this low collision, uh, uh, in, uh, low speed collision, it was a low speed collision, did not injure more people. Um, there's been substantial progress made overnight. Nine out of the 10 cars of the passenger train that was involved in the collision have been re-railed and moved out of the area. That allows us to focus work on the remaining car, which is off the rails. And because it's a low height area, it's in a tunnel, the process of re-railing it is a little complicated. There are professionals down there, God bless them. There's an army of people that have been down there overnight, uh, haven't slept, a uh, hundred or more folks, and they're pretty far along in the process of re-railing that car. Once that car is re-railed, we will be able to begin the process of a partial restoration of service. We're expecting that to take place sometime today. So please, uh, I would say to our customers, stay tuned to uh, the My MTA app, uh, online mta.info uh, and all of the social media which will have information about service when it is restored as i said that's expected sometime later today can't give you an exact time but we're pretty far along in the process i would just add that the the train that had been vandalized and damaged and which was involved in this collision is still going to be down there even when we restore service partially uh, we're going to still have to do some work on that train that is that is down there, the second train that was involved in the collision, and that's why there's going to be a limited service pattern after uh, we do get uh, service restored. As I said, I want to thank the workforce that's been down there. As we always say, it's an army that steps up. There is a professional uh, group at the MTA that specializes in re-railing in these kinds of accidents. They did an amazing job, and they continue to do work. A note about our uh, service. Last night and through right now, we have deployed an extensive fleet of additional buses to make sure that folks in this corridor do have service and that they're able to get where they're going and move around. Uh, not as fast as, as uh, everybody expects with the, with the great New York City subway, but there have been 75 buses out there uh, since yesterday. Uh, most of them are operating as shuttle buses along this corridor on the, the Broadway uh, corridor that's been impacted by the loss of subway service. We've had a huge number of customer service personnel out there overnight, both station agents, the folks who've come out of the booths and are now interacting with customers every day, all day, and supplemental people as well to make sure we are getting information to our customers if they arrive at a station without uh, a knowledge of, of what's going on. So huge progress that's been made. I did speak to the governor this morning um, and was in touch with her yesterday as well. She's very closely monitoring this. And a final note, we have begun uh, uh, the discussions with the NTSB, which is the National Transportation Safety Board, which is arriving uh, today to begin their work. And there will be a meeting this morning uh, to start their work in supplementing our investigation with their, their own. And we're looking forward to that that dialogue as well. So with that, let me turn it over to Rich Davey. Thanks, Jan. I'll, I mean, you said it well. I'll just say a couple other things. First, again, appreciation to our workforce who have been working all night to uh, restore service. Uh, you know, as usual, transit workers, when called upon, uh, respond uh, tremendously, which is what they're doing. Just in terms of the complexity of why this is, uh, you know, why we're being so diligent and cautious as we move uh, this equipment around, you know, as Jano said, the final car of the passenger train that derailed, there, there's no room, right? This is a tunnel, and so being able to lift this and move, it's incredibly difficult. So they're literally lifting it a few inches, shimming it over, lifting it a few, shimming it over, literally. Uh, so that process takes a while. I think we're gonna also put out a picture later to show you the front car of the um, train that was out of service, the truck, which literally holds the wheels together, the front truck, it's a a box, if you will, that holds the four wheels together, was mangled. Um, that has been uh, taken away. The train is currently sitting on ties, railroad ties, literally wooden blocks. And the last piece of this will be to bring in a new truck 
uh, put the car on top of it and then roll it out. Again, with only inches to spare in this tunnel, uh, it's an incredibly delicate process and the crew's doing just an amazing uh, piece of work. So with that, I'll kick it back to Jano. We'll obviously take questions. No, I mean, sort of what happened, I think we can we can say why it happened, we can't, right? And that'll be part of the NTSB's investigation. But uh, the passenger train, uh, we believe, had a, a green light, a signal to proceed, uh, and it was from going from the express track to the local track. Uh, the train that was in distress, the one that was out of service because, as Jano mentioned, the vandalism uh, was proceeding and it didn't have the signal. As a result, it bumped into the train. Why, we don't know. That's still under investigation. and. Obviously, with the NTSB's expertise, we look forward to working with them to get to the why. Anybody else over here? Evan. Whenever there a flagger on the track, did there work happening on that section of the track? No. There was a flagger um, at the front of the train, right? So the train itself was inoperable, that, that train. It was being operated from the conductor position. And so that flagger, when you're operating the train from the middle of the train, is the eyes of the train. So that's what the flagger was doing. So that flagger's on the train? Correct. Obviously, it's part of the investigation, but keep in mind, this was a disabled train, right? So this was not a train that was uh, functioning appro appropriately, which is why you had the several-man crew there to protect against. So uh, you're right. In any other scenario, if these are two trains working, one wouldn't have been able to proceed. Uh, but because you had this out-of-service train uh, with mechanical issues, uh, but again, uh, that's why you have multiple crews then as the eyes and ears of the train. All right. Well, let's talk about that. No, it is not. Anna? Uh, yeah, I'm curious what, what kind of work is still being done to the train that, I think Greg said, is going to stay down there even after service parking is removed? Yeah, so, so again, it's it's the, so if you picture it, it's really out of service uh, train on the local track that the head car, the head car is still leaning against the wall and only has one set of wheels, if you will. We need to put uh, we need to move it back onto the track, obviously with the full set of wheels, and then move it. So that's going to take some time in. All right, back over here, Roger. Yeah, I think we'll you understand, the Anna, they yeah. understand the undercarriage where the yeah. where the wheels are, what we call the truck, with the axle and the wheels, and it's connected to the car body, was was destroyed in this contact. So now they've taken that destroyed, mangled truck out, and they're once they're able to to get the the passenger train fully out of there, that last car being re-railed, they will be able to bring in a new truck, roll it down the track from 125th Street, and to install it on that car, so to that that, that car which is now lacking wheels. Is that brake still out? The one that was stuck or whatever? I don't, I don't think that that's gonna be a problem. When they get when they get the wheels and they get everything on the on the rail and they get all the wheels operable, they will be able to roll it back to the yard. Correct. Yep. And it went against, it had no go signal, but it went anyway. Correct. The fact that it didn't pay attention to the signal, is that how it's somehow connected to the problems that train had? I think that goes to the question of why. We're not sure yet. Obviously, that's going to be part of the investigation. And the car that's stuck in the tunnel that you don't have much head with, that only moved and was in the passenger. So there are two that we're working on right now. As Jeno said, the last car on the passenger train, the one that was in service, uh, is being re-railed as we speak. Once we get that out of the way, we'll be able to run limited service. Then we'll move over to the second car, which has the truck, the wheels that are were mangled, and we need to bring them in. On the other train. Correct. But the one there, there's no, not, not a lot of clearance in the tunnel. It's both. There are, it's all. There's, there's very little clearance. So in, there are two trucks in the tunnel. There are two trains in the tunnel, but the tunnel is low clearance everywhere. All right, now move on. Romney, go ahead. Thank you very much. This is Romney with NTC. My question is about the tie line. I know it's closed right now. Could this lead into the afternoon, early evening, or potentially the weekend, potentially? I mean, we'll
we'll see. I mean, our hope is to try to get back, as Gino said, some service today. Um, uh, and, and that's our goal. But again, as we said, it's, it's a pretty complicated sequence of events. We need to get that last train out, railed, re-railed first. We can potentially then run some limited service and then go attack the, uh, the out-of-service train, which has the mangled truck. Will those still be in place again this evening? They'll be in place as long as we need them. Absolutely. Again, the signal system needs to interact with the train itself. The train that moved, uh, it was disabled, right? And so when you have the mechanical portion of the train that uh, is having challenges, that's why you have, you know, a secondary backup, which in this case were, you know, the operators. We're looking at all these uh, issues to, to say, to, to be sure. Um, but um, again, you know, as, as, as you know, mentioned, you know, this was a train that was vandalized. People pulled emergency brakes. We tried to reset it. We couldn't, we, they, the crew couldn't reset one. We had to get rid of that train and get it out of the way. So the frustrating part is someone decided to play a prank or do something, otherwise uh, vandalize our train, and here we are. All right, last question. We're going to start and end with Lindsay Putman. Uh, thank you. Uh, Daniel, just a quick question. Yeah. Obviously, this was a slow speed incident. Which yeah. Is, thank God, uh, no one was severely injured. But for people who are a little nervous, what if the trains were going faster? What if it, What do you say to passengers that are getting on the other train? Well, listen, you know, the, the New York City subway system operates, first of all, it's operating more reliably and with more service than it has in many, many years. So the, the overall system is working well. The frequency of these kinds of events is so rare. The last one is, uh, I think it was in 2020 when there was a derailment, and before that it was five plus years before that. So the really infrequent problems, and there's a reason this was a low speed collision, a low speed collision, which is there was a disabled train that was operating, you know, was, was not operating normally, and it was moving very, very slowly and very carefully. So, you know, this is a, this, this is, a, it, trains are not supposed to run into each other ever, but there's a reason this was low speed collision, and people should feel comfortable getting back on the train and getting where they need to go. All right, thanks everybody. Any Thank you very much. Got it's their choice. It's always their choice. Yeah, they decide. Thank you.